one of his pictures are equivalent to 10 of somebody else's. You know, you go to movies, you go to movies to be, to be involved in the picture, uh, to get a sense, I just want to, I want to lose myself up in that screen for a few hours and, uh, uh, in a sense, know what it's like to be human. Um, then you come across certain kinds of films that um, when you go to the theater and when you see them, you're completely surprised. They make you look at life a different way. They make you look at being human a different way. They touch areas that you don't want to touch sometimes. Uh, it's provoke, provoke you. Um, and then there's that rarest of films where when you see it continually over years, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, you still see more in it. And what's even better is that if you're making pictures, you go back to this well, this source, for A, inspiration, and B, maybe it should be A, is to learn, to learn how to make yeah. pictures. To learn, and remember when you get tired, especially if you make 10 or 12 films in your life, and you, uh, you get tired, you say, why, how can I get that better? What, what can I do? Y you look at that source, you look at that inspiration, you say, well, Kubrick, Kubrick wouldn't let it stay this way. Yeah. He would have, he would have, Change that angle. He would have worked it out. He would have tried to figure out getting more time to shoot the scene this way or that way. He would have, he would have really seen it through to its end. Yeah. And for that inspiration, I, I must say, I, mean, I must say, uh, it's it, looking at his films. Um, and there's many ways I look at his films besides on a big screen. I like watching him on television. I like watching with the sound off. Sometimes you can see the rhythm of the cutting and the camera moves. And when he cuts in a two shot conversation, the classic one is Mr. Grady, Jack Torrance in the bathroom. Right. right. Uh, crossing the invisible line with right. the red background, yeah. uh, the cuts. And uh, when he cuts, when he destroys the invisible line, and when the shot gets tighter, on which line of dialogue? 